Welcome to edusathi.com, your partner in education. In this lecture, we'll discuss the concept of modifiers. Now, what exactly are modifiers? These are the optional elements that might be a word or a phrase that modify the meaning of a sentence. Now, if I understand what exactly is to modify, we all know that modify means to change or to alter. So, if any phrase in a sentence or any word in a sentence basically modifies the actual meaning of the sentence, that phrase becomes the modifier. Now, what exactly happens is that whenever you're presented with a statement, its literal meaning and the implied meaning may differ because of the placement of words in the sentence and this is what is checked in the examination as well now they'll give you a sentence and you'll be able to interpret what exactly the author wants to say but the literal meaning would be different so your task would be to check whether the literal meaning and the implied meaning of the sentence are same or not and if they are not then how do i restructure the sentence so as the both the meanings are same that is the literal meaning and the implied meaning are same and the words that basically are misplaced which leads to a difference in both the meanings are known as modifiers to better understand this concept let's do an exercise now there's this sentence written as i wash my car and we'll insert the word only at different places of this sentence and then try and interpret what each time the sentence means now for example it's written only i wash my car this means that nobody else apart from me would wash the car right because it's written only i that is there's nobody else who's washing the car it's only me who's washing the car so only i wash my car means that nobody else does that only i do it now what if i place only before wash and i say i only wash my car think over it a minute and try and guess what exactly this sentence means Obviously, it means that I do not use my car or I do not do anything with else uh, with my car apart from washing it. I do not drive it. I do not sit into it. I do not dry clean it. I just wash my car. That is it. Because now only is joined to wash. This means that there's nothing else done apart from washing. So I only wash my car. I just wash my car. I do not use it what if i place only before my i wash only my car this means that i do not wash anybody else's car it's only mine car that i wash i just wash the car that i own i do not wash anybody else's car because only is now written with my so this means that i am limiting the scale of my that uh, the scale to myself that i just wash my own car and nobody else's likewise if i write only with car i say i wash my only car now i wash my only car only is now limiting the uh, scale of car that is it it means that i do not have any other car i just have one car and I wash it so I wash my only car means that I just wash the only car or the just the single car that I have and now I wash my car only again it is limiting the scale of car but it means that I do have other locomotives say that I have a bike or a bicycle and a car but I just wash the car out of the three I do not wash anything else now one thing that we can see is that the word only that is the position of the word only changes the entire meaning of the sentence 
if i had placed it before i it meant that just i washed the car which might be owned by many people but if i say uh, uh, i wash my only car this means i just have one car and that is what i want so the position of the word only modifies the meaning of the sentence thus only acts to be the modifier now we discuss what exactly happens when any word is misplaced in a sentence now uh, now there the words like only just nearly barely etc are usually misplaced they are kept somewhere else they are slipped in the sentence at wrong places for example if i say he barely kicked the ball 20 yards now i want to say that uh, he when he kicked the ball just moved like 20 yards and it could not go beyond that but if i have written barely with kicked this means barely is an adverb for kicked kicked is the verb barely is modifying kicked that means barely kicked means he could not kick it nicely that is he was not in good condition he was might be he was suffering from some illness or he had some pain and that was the reason he could not kick the ball but nicely but i want to say that the ball traveled only 20 yards that to it was just 20 yards so i'll have to put this barely somewhere near 20 yards so if i write the struct sentence as he kicked the ball barely 20 yards now barely comes near 20 and it starts modifying 20 so it becomes an adverb for 20 20 is an adjective for yards and barely is modifying an adjective so it becomes an adverb now it is modifying 20 this means that the distance traveled by the ball was hardly 20 yards now i wanted to say that the distance traveled was 20 but i said this sentence so the entire meaning of the sentence changed this is the effect of misplaced modifiers now what is the methodology of checking whether or not is the sentence correct or does it have any misplaced modifier in it this a two step rule that we usually follow the first is checking for the subject in the sentence quite many times the sentences are stated without the subject now for example uh, famous brands uh, have taglines attached to them now for example one of the tagline says just do it now here the verb is do now if i ask who has to do it or who does it i do not get an answer and since there is no answer that means there is no subject and we already know that a sentence is considered to be complete only if there is a subject and a verb and the object in the sentence is optional so the equation for a sentence says that sentence is equal to subject plus verb plus an optional object now in the given tagline i said just do it who has to do it i do not get an answer there is a subject that is not present thus the sentence is incomplete the sentence with no subject must be completed by putting a relevant subject in the sentence and once we have done that the sentence would be correct for example there is a sentence like closing the green door the vacation came to an end now obviously the verb here is closing now to find the subject i simply ask the question who closes the door because closing is the verb and to find the subject i write who or i ask the question who with the verb so who is closing the door and i really don't get any answer since there is no answer that means the subject is missing now i ask the question who i do not get an answer so this means the subject is missing and now to correct the sentence i'll have to insert any subject into the sentence now 
I restructure the sentence and write closing the green door my vacation came to an end now usually people would think that now I have written my vacation this means that I have inserted a subject now who is closing the door I am closing the door but look at the structure closely again now the verb is obviously closing and I ask the question who is closing and I still don't get an answer who is closing is it mentioned that I am uh, closing the door no it is not and secondly my is an emphatic pronoun it is an emphatic pronoun for vacation it is not being used as a subject the subject case of my is I and since there is no I written in the subject uh, in the sentence the sentence is still incomplete so to complete the sentence I'll write the sentence as as I closed the door my vacation came to an end now here obviously the word closed is my verb I asked the question who closed and I get the answer as I which is explicitly mentioned in this sentence and since there is a subject and there is a verb the sentence is correct let's take another example we get when the clock struck one Sylvia's fingers started to type more swiftly I try and find where is the verb the verb is started I asked the question who started to find the subject now the answer might be given as fingers or Sylvia's fingers but Sylvia's fingers can never be the subject why because the subject is always a person and since fingers are not a person this cannot be the subject and if you think Sylvia's fingers has Sylvia as the subject again that would be incorrect why because it has an apostrophe s attached to it thus it is not a name here it is not acting as the subject it is acting as a possessive case of noun thus to restructure the sentence we'll write the sentence as when the clock struck once Sylvia started to type more swiftly with her fingers now here if I ask the question who started I get the answer as Sylvia so thus I have a proper person's name that is acting as a subject thus the sentence is correct so once you have found the subject the second thing that you do is check the positioning of the parts of sentences many a times the smaller phrases or words are slipped into wrong places in a sentence now as we were discussing in an example above uh, barely 20 yards and he barely quicked, uh, kicked the ball 20 yards the word barely was slipped in an incorrect position of the sentence now and there's a small rule about grammar it says that the part of the sentence that is written near to a noun becomes true for that very noun so for example we consider this sentence like sauce in a lumpy gravy Emma served Desmond a plate of diced vegetables now if I have to find the subject I find the subject in Emma served is the verb Emma is the subject and now the, I check the structurizing or the positioning of the elements of the sentence now this clause that Emma in sauced in a lumpy gravy is written near to Emma and as per this rule that we've just discussed it becomes true for Emma which means that Emma was sauced in the gravy and she served Desmond a plate of diced vegetables the entire meaning of the sentence has changed since the part of the sentence is written near to the subject it becomes true for the subject but is that possible can Emma be sauced in the gravy obviously not but the diced vegetables can be so although there is a subject and a verb but still the sentence is not correct 
as per modifier since solved in the gravy is written near emma thus it is true for emma this means emma was solved in the gravy which is logically inconsistent so to correct the sentence i move that part of the sentence near the diced vegetables now we have a subject in emma we have verb as served and solved in the gravy is written near the diced vegetables thus it is true for diced vegetables and now the sentence is correct let's take another example we have suzy was on the eden's garden as mr dave gave back her perfect calculus sheet with a near to ear grin you can pause the video here and think about the sentence and try and interpret whether this given sentence is correct or not now first thing that i do is find the subject now who was on the eden's garden suzy was so i do have a subject in suzy suzy is the subject and the verb is was now uh, probably we some of us might not be aware of the idiom eden's garden eden garden means a very highly delighted state so eden's garden or ninth cloud or cloud nine or even a uh, seventh heaven these are the uh, idioms that are used for highly delighted state now if i'll check the structure of the sentence suzy was on the eden's garden as mr dave gave back her perfect calculus sheet with an ear to your grin now if i closely observe the sentence i will get to see that with an ear to ear grin is written near the sheet now suzy is a noun mr dave is a noun and calculus sheet sheet is the noun and this clause or this phrase is written near the sheet this means that Suzy was delighted to see the sheet was having a having an an ear to ear grin that that is it was smiling which is not possible the sheet cannot smile but who can smile Mr Dave can smile because he he has the ability of smiling so to the, to correct this sentence I'll move with an ear to ear grin near Mr Dave and the correct sentence would be. Suzy was on the Eden's garden, and Mr. Dave, with an ear to ear grin, gave back her perfect calculus sheet. Now, every part of the sentence is at the correct position. 